This is bullet journaling basics, and we will be introducing you to the method and spreads that are used in bullet journaling. My name is Meredith. I work over at the Harrington Library, and my moderator today is Caitlin, and she will be helping answer questions in the chat box and sharing any of your questions that uh, could be uh, useful for everyone to hear. Um, so she'll pass those on to me, and I will answer those as we go. And let's get started. So how is bullet journaling different from traditional journaling? Well, it is a method of collecting all of your important information into a single location. So it is intended for your to-do list, your grocery shopping, your goals that you're trying to achieve, and even your traditional diary, how was my day uh, journal entries can be included in there. It's very flexible, so a bullet journal consists of a collection of spreads, which are just the different kinds of layouts that have different purposes. So you pick and choose what spreads work for you, you put them in the order that works for you, and you kind of do it as you go. So it's very flexible, you don't end up with a planner that has you know, the weeks and months all pre-printed, and then if you don't do anything in that week, that week is blank. Well, with bullet journaling, you would leave that space as narrow as it needs to be to get the basics of those days and then move on and you conserve a lot of paper and space that way. Um, and then a nice little quote that I got off of the uh, bulletjournal.com, which is the website for um, writer Carol, the creator of the bullet journal method is it's a mindfulness practice disguised as a productivity system. So the idea of a mindfulness practice is you are aware of the things that are in the moment of what's important to you. And that's kind of what the bullet journal boils down to by keeping track in your log of the uh, tasks that you need to accomplish and the ones that maybe you're not following through on, you ask yourself, is this a task that I really need to do? And you kind of weed through um, your goals and objectives and help, it helps you kind of focus on what you want to do. So what can you use a bullet journal for? You can use it as a planner for events, birthdays, and important dates. You can use it as the traditional journal with your daily reflections or note taking. You can use it as a list keeper or a outlet for creativity. Um, if any of you have done any searching for, for bullet journal ideas online, I'm sure you've seen some of the just inspirationally artistic uh, designs that are out there that people have done. Uh, it's a very creative and it is a way to get creative that works for you. Um, you don't have to be able to draw a fabulous Mona Lisa rendition in your journal. You can you know, use stamps, use uh, all sorts of different tools to make it a creative reflection of yourself. So we'll start with the basics. Um, well, first, let's do a quick poll. How would you like to use your bullet journal? How do you see yourself using it? And this is a multiple choice one, so you can pick whatever you think you'll end up using it for. I'd like to see what we're kind of expecting to use our journals for. And this will help me put some emphasis on different spreads that we can talk about. I'll give you guys a minute or two to fill that in. Okay, so let's see. We have all the responses up here. It looks like most of you are wanting to use it for task planning, but we have a nice spread across all of the other stuff. Um, for those of you who picked other, if you wanna share how 
you are thinking of wanting to use it, I'd love to see some of your ideas in the chat. That would be really neat. Um, so a nice combination of task planning and diary, and we'll go from there. Um, I do have some examples of all of these things, um, so we'll get to talking on those. But first, let's get into supplies that you need for journaling. Um, and this is very dependent on how you want to do your journaling and how in-depth and up to your eyeballs and supplies you want to get. So first of all, you need your journal. And this can be as simple as a spiral notebook that you have laying around from your school days that just, you know, never got used. Um, but if you want to put a little bit of thought into how you're going to use it, there are some things you can consider when getting a journal. Uh, so first off is paper type. Uh, there's several styles of journals out there. There's your traditional line, which has just, you know, the line pages that you use to write on. Blank, if you feel old and creative, uh, if you're not worried about your writing going left, right, up and down and all over. Um, grid paper is great because it allows for precision in doing some of the spreads that we'll be talking about but it is very visually intrusive. And my personal favorite and alternative to the grid is the dot grid, which uh, in this picture up here is the top one. So the nice thing about the dot grid, and this example here is actually a lot bolder than most dot grid pages are, is the dots are there to help you do very precise line drawing and alignment of what you put on your page but the dots are so light that they kind of blend into the background, so you don't really notice them too much. So it's a great way to organize your, your pages without having the visuals of the grid page. Uh, some other things to consider is um, binding. So there are a lot of different options for binding, uh, as examples in this picture up uh, here. You've got the spiral binding, you've got uh, some fancier styles of binding, just general sewn, and then a more of a book style binding. Uh, the spiral is a great way to have stuff, you know, easily flipped through, but the downside to it is if you have a spread that goes across two pages, that spiral is going to get in the way. Uh, if you're wanting to do a lot more artistic stuff, you want, may want to pick a binding that lies really flat, that allows you to, uh, go across two pages without having to worry about the little bumps that come with uh, a more rigid binding style. Uh, paper quality is also very important. If you're just using a simple ballpoint pen and that's all you plan to use, paper's not going to be, the quality of the paper isn't going to be too important. But if you're planning on using more artistic mediums, uh, if you're planning on using markers or paints or anything like that, you want to have a paper that's sturdy enough that it won't let the ink bleed through um, and will hold up to any moisture that you might add to it or that sort of thing. So that's something to consider as well. And then finally, size. So a lot of people want to take their bullet journal with them because, like I said before, it is your container of all things important to you. So having something that is easy to carry around but also easy to write in is a kind of Nice middle ground of size. Uh, a lot of people use the, I believe it's five by eight or five and a half by eight size, um, but you pick what works best for you, honestly. All right, any questions about journals and what you might consider when picking one? No questions. Okay. Time. We do have some. Well, time. if anything pops up, we'll just keep moving on and you can always go back to, to stuff. So, the creative tools, the way you get the pen to the paper, the ink on the page. Um, so, there's a lot of different styles of pens out there. Uh, so some stuff to consider. I'm not going to necessarily, you know, speak to a specific type because different ones work for everyone, but some things to consider when you are looking at pens is the tip style. So you've got your standard ballpoint pen, there's felt tips, there's gel pens, there's brush style pens that do a very nice work with calligraphy if you're a big fan of doing calligraphy or just wanting to try it out for the first time. Um, ink type is also important because in combination with your paper quality, the type of ink you use 
will determine whether or not it bleeds through that page real easily, if it dries fast enough, if you have to worry about it smudging, or if you have to let it sit for a while. Um, so there's several different types of ink out there that you can try and see what works for you. Um, thickness of the tip of the pen is also very important. If you're wanting to do big, bold titles, you'll want to have a few thicker pens on hand, maybe even markers. Um, if you're wanting to get detailed notes written into small little areas, you might want a really narrow tip. Uh, they make them surprisingly narrow into uh, like 0.05 millimeters and down to itty bitty bitty sizes. Um, and then of course color. You can keep it black and white if that's you want to go simple. Uh, if you're wanting to add a little color and flair, there are all sorts of pins out there that have just a variety, a rainbow of color. Um, but you do want to consider whether or not the ink is nice and easy to read or if it's going to be something that you'll have to decipher later. Um, so your colors like yellows and those lighter pinks may be something that you use more for accents and less for the big important information. Um, a absolute must if you're planning on doing a precise uh, layouts would be a ruler. Um, I typically use a nice small six inch one because I have a smaller notebook and so I don't need anything longer than that and the small size allows me to carry it around with me very easily. Um, but you know, use what works for you, but having a ruler on hand is always helpful. And then of course, you can get into a huge array of different decorative stuff. Um, in the picture up here, I've got some examples of washi tape, which is kind of like a masking tape, but with uh, decoration to it. Uh, some of them have just color, or there's ones that have foil designs on them. Uh, they're a lot of fun to create little accents to your page without having to actually do the drawing yourself. Um, there's also colored pencils you can use, um, a whole brand of what are called midliners. They're like highlighters, but not quite so uh, visually offensive as a regular highlighter. They're meant to kind of bring color to your, your journal without overwhelming it. Um, and then of course you can use regular markers as well. And these supplies are of course available at just about anywhere you go. You can go to Walmart and get these. You can go to uh, bookstores, to specialty arts and crafts supply stores. You can find them on Amazon. Uh, they're available everywhere. All right, so now we're gonna get into the nitty gritty techniques. Um, so this is the basic concept that bullet journaling was founded on. Uh, and it's something that you can Use if you want, you don't have to. Bullet journaling is very much about your personal fit, but I'm gonna share the ideas with you and hopefully they resonate with you. So rapid logging is the technique of doing short, simple entries into your journal. It's quickly jotting down notes in the moment and it's being very precise and uh, like I said, simple. So in the example on the picture here, it's you know just simple two words three words sometimes one word if it if you know exactly what it means so um, on this example under Tuesday engineering to you and me doesn't mean anything but to the person who created this journal they know exactly what that means um, so you can if if you want to do any sort of shorthand to help yourself out you can make a uh, note in a key to keep track of those things it's just something to keep in mind to help simplify things. And then uh, a way to keep everything organized is categorizing the information as you go. So the three main categories used in bullet journaling are tasks. And these are the things that you need to do. It can be, you know, go to the post office, go to the grocery store, water the plants. And those are typically noted with a little dot, which is where you get the bullet journaling from. It's the little bullet in the bullet journaling. Then you have events. So these are date related, time related, specific things that have to be done at a specific time. Um, in the example over here, they're the ones that have the, t the dates and the times by them. And then notes are kind of your catch-all additional information. So it can be, if you are going to use this as a diary, uh, a diary would entry would fall under a note. 
or if you are um, making an observation about the weather for the day, that would also be a note. And then another important part of this is the migration. So this is where you take all that information that you've written down for either the day before or the month before as you switch over to the next month and you note what's been done and what needs to be either moved forward in scheduling, as in moved to the next month or the next day, moved way advanced into a couple of months away, or it just didn't get done and you cross it out and it's not going to happen. So the act of migrating your tasks, events, all of that information is a part of how the bullet journaling process carries on and makes sure that your tasks get done. All right, so getting started on an actual layout. So we're gonna walk through a very basic layout for a journal. You can opt to use this layout or you can pick and choose, uh, but we're gonna kind of walk through the basic spreads that are used in a, a very basic bullet journal. So the first part is the title page, and this is very much optional. Um, if you want to use this to be creative or to help you keep track of uh, what the bullet journal is for, this is where you would do so. You can make it very simple. Um, this is a pretty simple design here. Um, they just used uh, some stamps to get the pretty little leaves. And then just a note of what it's for. It's bullet journaling for 2018. Or you can use this to just really be artistic. You could have a whole artscape scene and use very stylized lettering. It should be kind of a reflection of you and what the journal is for. And it's a great place to explore some different techniques. The key is what you use to keep track of the different symbols that you use with your various um, categories of information. So really basic key, you have your tasks, a completed task, you X through it, one that you are uh, migrating forward to the next day, you draw a little arrow showing it going forward. If you're going to schedule it for, you know, further out in which, you know, it actually needs to be written down either in a month spot or a year spot, you use a little fun arrow in the other direction. Um, events, I've seen people use open circles or squares, just something that makes it kind of stand out as different than a regular task. And then a little dash for notes. You can, make note of ones that need priority, something that you want to look into more. This is very up to you. Uh, so the importance of these symbols are they help you classify your information as you keep moving forward. Um, they're very great visual reminders of when you have a task that you haven't completed yet. Uh, and it makes you stop and think, how do I need to continue with this task? And then something that I find personally very helpful is an incomplete task doesn't mean that you failed. It doesn't mean that you let yourself down. It just means that that task needs to be moved forward and addressed at a later date. So it, it's very nice to have that reassurance that it's okay. You'll get to the task. You just need to figure out when you can do it. Okay, any questions about the key before I get into the index next? We do not have a question about the key, but okay. we have a question about which you view as more effective, a book journal or an electronic journal on a phone? Well, the, the concept behind bullet journaling as, as uh, writer Carol fleshes it out in his website and on his book is that the act of actually putting pen to paper is uh, part of what helps you remember things and part of what engages you in the information. So in that sense, I tend to lean towards the book journal, but it is again, really it boils down to what works best for you. If you find that having that electronic journal works better for you, there's actually a lot of great resources out there on how to set up a bullet journal style digital version. Um, and I'll share those at the end of the program. But uh, the whole idea of this is really adapt it to how best it works for you. 
just keep that in mind. All right. And we'll look at our next part of our journal, which is the index. And this is what really helps make the whole bullet journal process work. Um, an index is just your, like in any book, is a quick guide to where your different pieces of information are. You don't have to worry about what order your page numbers are in on the index. It's just where you have your information stored. And you want to limit the topics to ones that you are going to be referring back to often. Otherwise, your, your index will get filled up pretty fast. It's a good idea to start with at least two pages for your index uh, and kind of see where you go as far as using up pages in your journal. So the great thing about bullet journaling is you can put stuff in any order, write something down when you think about it, and it's just go with it. And the index is what allows that to happen. So for an example, in this sample index up here, you can see that for the June monthly log, it's nice and clear, page five through six, but when you get into the daily log, there's a little break. It goes from seven to eight and then skips all the way to 15. And that's because the person that created this index, as they were going through the month of June, they realized that they wanted to do some meal planning. They wanted to note down some books they wanted to read and some movies they wanted to watch. And so they were able to just put those pages right in the book right after the day that they thought about it and then pick up where they left off with their dailies. So it can look a little bit chaotic when you flip through it, but when you keep track of it using your index, you'll be able to find your stuff without a problem. So your first big spread that you're gonna to wanna to have is the future log. This is your overview of the year. It's a 12 month spread, typically, since we are smack dab in the middle of the year, you have a couple of options if you were to say start exactly today. If you wanted to, you could do a kind of looking back at the rest of the year and writing down the important information that happened, so like birth dates and events that you wanted to remember as you move forward. You could start from today and make your year from August to August and just keep going that way. Or you could do a shorter version and have you know, just the rest of this year in one journal and then pick up again next year starting at the beginning of the year. Um, again, that, it de depends very much on what works for you. If you're a student and you wanna keep track of your school year, then you know, starting in August may be perfect. Um, so it really boils down to how you want to set up your journal. Um, but in your future log, you're going to put important dates, important events, the broad overview of things. If you do have a task that you just do annually, you could also note when you're going to plan to do it in here. Um, it's a, kind of a snapshot at the year ahead, and it, it's something that you'll refer to whenever you set up your next spread, which is the, oh, sorry, almost skipped the other option. This is right here is a very simple spread. It just has the month and then you just add your days that you have stuff going on. If you wanted to get a little fancier and actually see where those days fall in the month and kind of have a more specific view of how your time is being used, there is an option of combining the future log with little monthly calendars. This is real handy if you've got a lot of stuff going on and you wanna see where you have free days available. So like with September, you can see that this whole week is taken up with a trip and then you only have one day of break before you've got two other things that are happening. And so it's very useful to keep track of what's going on and your time that you have available. But the downside to it is that you have also less room for events. So you kinda of wanna balance functionality of the different things that you add in there with the space that you might need. If you're a person that has a ton of events, you might need to um, leave more room. Or if you really like still having the calendar, maybe you need to spread your months out a little more. And instead of having you know, six months spread over two pages, you need three months or four months. 
so this is kind of an area where you can play around with what works for you and see how it goes the first year you try it and then make adjustments the next year if you find that something works or something doesn't work and you need to make adjustments. So the future log is what you'll refer to when you're setting up your monthly log. This is a zoomed in version of what's going to happen in the month. You put down all of your different activities. This example here is a very basic one that just lists all the days out. This is useful if you typically only have one or two activities a day. If you find yourself a little busier, I have a few examples later I can show of other options with the monthly log that will allow for a little more flexibility. Um, but this is where you put specific appointments you might have, like doctor's visits, um, birthdays, et cetera. Go right in here. And this one is coupled with a second sheet for monthly goals or tasks that you might have. So it's kind of a task page. And this is where you can put down like the monthly chores that you have to do. Say that you every June you clean the windows or if you're doing every other month mopping of floors and this is the month to mop, you can make a list of that in your task list. Any questions about future or monthly logs? Not at this time. Okay, well, don't feel afraid to ask. If it comes to you later, we can definitely go back and answer. And then the bread and butter, the, the meat of the journal is your daily log. So when you're creating a daily log, what you do typically is you'll either start it at the beginning of the day or the night before, and you'll write down all of the tasks and activities, events that you are going to have coming in that day. Um, you can also update items throughout the day. So if, say, you had a doctor's appointment and they called at the last minute and cancel, you would make note of that on your daily. You can use as much or as little space as you need, and that's kind of the nice thing about that. In this design, they went ahead and drew the line straight across and had it set up. And you can do that if you'd like to, if you're more of a person who doesn't want to have to plan at the beginning or end of the day. But the downside to that is it constricts you to that preset amount of space. So if you end up needing more space, you'll have to either write teeny tiny or flood into your next day. Um, what I typically do with mine is I set up my day I write it down and then at the end of the day when I set up the next one, I just draw the line right underneath that day and do the next one. And so it doesn't look quite as um, even and nicely spread out as this, but it does allow me the space that I need for each day. And if I have a day where I've only got one thing going on, it doesn't take up a huge amount of space that goes unused. So it's very much a conservation of space. And some other spreads that you can either add to your already existing spreads or make as their own separate pages. Uh, there's a lot of different ideas out there. These are just a few of them. So you can use habit or wellness trackers. And these are just ways to mark down when you've accomplished a, either a negative habit that you're trying not to do or a positive habit that you're trying to really build on. Um, so with the little example that we have up here, you know, morning meditation and exercise, um, getting unplugged, when you accomplish those things, you mark them on the day of the month. Typically, I've seen these work best as monthly, but you can do a yearly version of it. You can do a weekly one as well. It's really what kind of accountability you're wanting for the habits that you're wanting to build. You can also use this same format with tracking your daily water intake, whether or not you've taken your daily medications. Um, there's lots of ways to utilize it. Uh, and you can also use it to track your mood and you can get real artistic and creative with that. Um, I've seen simple versions where they use just kind of like this grid and used, you know, a different color for each day. 
or with like the example below, they did these cute little dangling crystals and you just color it in with the different color that reflects your mood for that day. And this is kind of a good way to be mindful of how you're feeling and keep track of you know, your, your wellness, both mentally and physically. Um, if you're wanting to get a little more fiscally responsible, budgeting spreads are a great way to do that. You can use them in a lot of different ways. Um, you can use it for keeping track of the loans that you're paying off, uh, keep track of the amount of money that you're accruing in your savings account. If you're a small business owner, you can always use it as a way to keep track of sales that you've made. Um, and you can also use it as a tracker of goals and needs. So this example over here is just a simple June budget of how different money is being used. There's a grocery section, uh, a going out one, there's a bills, and at the end you have your totals and end notes to keep track of you're like, oh, I did a great job of not eating out too much or ooh, I need to find a new energy provider because they're charging me out, you know, crazy amounts of money. Um, and so this one's a real simple way of doing it. And at the end, I'll show you a few other examples as well. And then for those of you who are either trying to you know, eat more healthy or get a little more organized in your meals that you're doing, meal planning and shopping lists are a great way to really keep track of that and plan ahead. You, uh, this is an example of a combination of the two. You've got the meal planning to one side and then the shopping list that will you know, tell you, what do I need to get to make all of this stuff over here? Um, and you can put those two together for kind of a two page joint spread, or you can use just one or the other. Um, so the nice thing about this is you can have a place to keep track of your meals um, and also be able to look back week to week and see what you tried. Um, if you really liked it, you could put like a little star or a check mark. If it was awful, you know, draw a sad face or cross it out and be like, never again. Um, and that way you can kind of build a, a consistent set of meals that works for you. Uh, also great for if you're trying to track your calories and want to make sure that you are, you know, eating food that will give you the vitamins and nutrients you need to be feeling great. You can have a selection of breakfast and a selection of snacks that are on the okay to eat list. Um, so it kind of helps solve the, oh no, we don't have anything to eat dilemma. I haven't tried using this personally, but it's probably something I should get on because I know I'm definitely one of those people who gets to the end of the day and is like, oh dear, what are we going to do for dinner? My personal favorite are the entertainment trackers. Um, I am a avid reader of book series and graphic novels that have volumes and volumes and volumes. Um, and so you can keep track of what volume you're on in a series. Um, you can also keep track of what reads that you are currently going to be reading, what you'd like to read in the future. Um, you can write, use it for writing down recommendations. So if you know somebody suggest something to you, you can have a specific area where you keep those recommendations so they're easy to find. It's not just a scribbled piece of paper you've tucked into a book never to be found again. Um, you can also do watching version where you keep track of the movies you've watched. You can actually write down your own little reviews if you wanted to, you know, go, oh my gosh, this was a great movie, recommend to everybody. You can, you know, write down some of the highlights so that when you're talking to people about it, you know exactly what to share with them. You can also use it as a yearly challenge progress recorder. Um, if any of you use Goodreads or online reading uh, sites that have a yearly tracker, um, this is a fun way to go uh, pen to paper with it. You can set yourself a goal and fill that list up as you go. And once that list is full, you've reached your yearly challenge. So some resources that we have that I'm going to recommend to you before we get into looking at just some fun examples of some spreads that I have. We have a lot of great overdrive ebooks that refer to bullet journaling. Um, specifically, we have the book written by Ryder Carroll, the man who 
copyrighted, invented, however you'd like to refer to it, the uh, bullet journaling method. This book is very, um, if you're very interested in the thought behind and the process of bullet journaling and why you do the different steps that you do for it, this book gets really in depth on that. And it, I recommend it if you're looking for something that's a little more uh, of a deep read. If you're looking for more of a book filled with examples and suggestions, I highly recommend the Dot Journaling, A Practical Guide by Rachel Wilkerson. This one has a lot of great examples of the different kinds of spreads uh, shown side by side. So she's got a whole section devoted to the future log, a whole section devoted to monthly, and a whole section devoted to dailies, as well as an entire big chunk of just different ways you can use the journal. Plus there's little fun tid tidbits about the history of journaling and that sort of stuff in there. So it's, it's a fun little read. And if you're wanting a purely inspirational visual type of book, the 365 bullet guide is chocked full of different little doodles that you can do, spread ideas. Um, it's very much a visual uh, kind of inspiration for bullet journaling ideas. And uh, I, let's see, I also mentioned, um, we brought up the digital journaling option on lynda.com, uh, which is a database you can access through the library's research and learn page. There is a class specifically about turning OneNote, which is a Microsoft Office program, into a bullet journal. So it gives you a step-by-step -step guide in how to use that particular software to meet your bullet journaling needs. And then we also have an entire database devoted to hobbies and crafts. It's called the Hobbies and Crafts Reference Center by EBSCO. And if you were to search journaling in that one, you can find a lot of great articles from hobby magazines and journals that give you detailed information about the journaling process. Um, so it's a great resource for inspiration and to kind of get ideas for what you'd like to do with your journaling. So I have one final quiz question here that's popped up that some of you might have seen is, uh, so is there anything that has kept you from bullet journaling in the past? And we'll give you a few more minutes to respond to that. Okay, a little over half of you have responded, so we'll go ahead and wrap up the poll. So it looks like a lot of you, the the big roadblock to bullet journaling has been not knowing where to begin. And I hope that this class has kind of given you some ideas. Um, I know that that was definitely something I struggled with when I was about to start bullet journaling. I wanted to research everything and know exactly what I was going to do before I get started. But the nice thing about bullet journaling is it is very flexible and it's very much an adaptable way of keeping track of things. So my recommendation is, is if you're feeling overwhelmed or feeling like you're not sure exactly what to do, uh, my recommendation would be start with get, get a future log set up, get the month of August set up and do a daily and just start. And then as you go, maybe you'll come up with an idea for a spread that you want to add, like you want to keep track of the books you want to read, and you can add that in as you go. You don't have to have the perfect setup for your journal mapped out before you get started. Um, so I hope that inspires you to get started on that. And since we are near the end here, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to some of my samples of different spreads that we can look through. Let me just pull it up. Okay. Uh, it looks like we have a question on here about, let's see, um, 
keeping a lot of different lists in different places and using a lot of different apps and it's kind of all spread out all over the place. Is there a theory for how to keep track of all of these things in the bullet system? So the idea is if, if you would like to go ahead and keep using the apps that you have, you can definitely do that. But if you're wanting to keep everything kind of together and organized, the bullet journal would be your go-to resource. And then from there, you could add your information in other areas if you wanted to do that. But the idea with the bullet journal is you would write everything down in it. So if you had a shopping list, instead of getting that you know random piece of paper and writing the shopping list on there, you would write it either on your daily or you could have a separate section that's just shopping lists that you use. Um, I personally put it in my daily. So if like I were to go shopping today, right in the, the space for the what I've done today, on the other side of it, I would just have shopping list and I'd write down all the different things that I'm going to go get from the store. Um, and I'd refer to that as I shopped because my bullet journal is small enough, I've carried it around with me. Um, so it's, it's really one of those things where I still do use uh, some digital stuff. Like I use a digital uh, Google Keep to do shopping lists. So since I only go shopping at one time, I will use that to kind of keep track of all of the things I need to go shopping for. And then on the day I've decided to go shopping, I take that and I write it down in my journal so that I've got it clearly available. Let's see. Ooh, let me see if I can get the, the poll to show. One moment. It seems to be misbehaving. Let's see. Let's do this. Maybe that'll work. No, Meredith, on your screen oh. share, it's not popping up. It's, it's blocking the view of everything behind it. So I can uh, just it. Oh, okay. Well, that's weird. It was supposed to only be sharing the screen. Yay, technology. It has its little quirks. Um, can everybody see it now? You should be good now. Okay, good. All right. And I think we've got another question here. Um, so it says, my work to do list is so long that it scares me and I'm not sure how to put it on a future log. Can it be multiple pages? So it really depends on what you're trying to do. So if your work to do list is stuff that you're doing daily versus um, stuff that you're having to plan out far in advance, um, then you'll want to put those in the daily. Um, if you could give us a little more example on, on what you mean, I mean, The uh, the multiple pages, any any of these spreads can be spread out to be multiple pages, however you best need to put your information in. Uh, so don't feel like you ever have to stick to exactly how you see the spread set up. Um, it's, it's really meant to be very flexible. And I'll actually show you a few different examples so that hopefully that helps give some ideas on that. Um, so for... for uh, an example of a future log that has six months spread out. Um, so the one that I did was horizontal. This one is a vertical spread um, and it puts all the dates in here so you can kind of see how the year plays out. So it's kind of a, a slightly different take on what we had where it was just the different events all piled together. It can really show you what you've got going on, where you've got a bunch of stuff, where you've got some more free space. Um, so this is kind of an example here of that yearly spread. Um, for an idea of how you can do your monthlies that might help organize things. So if you have like a bunch of different work goals in one month, you can break them up into more manageable sizes. You could have, um, this one uses wish list goals and tasks, but if you're using it for work, you could have um, group projects, 
individual work, um, specific, you know, tasks that are related to specific projects on the side. And then you can have your month spread here for the more uh, time specific events that you have to deal with. So this is another example of utilizing a journal, um, a monthly spread. And this one is kind of nice because it shows the different ways you can use to combine personal and work. So if you're wanting to keep track of your stuff for both work and your personal life, but you don't want to have it be a confusing mess, you can separate it out. So you can have your personal stuff on one side and your work stuff on the other. This one has the habit tracker set off to the side here and then a mood one right there. And it's all using the same numbers that are on the uh, left side here. Um, so that's a, a nice little way to spread things out. This is actually my own personal July spread. Um, I was finding with the current way um, things are going with COVID, um, I don't have as much personal activities happening. Um, and so having it spread out with every single day written out didn't really make a lot of sense to me. So I broke up my weeks into little blocks here and I'm able to write just the small events that are going on and I have a little monthly tracker so that I know where those dates line up with. Um, and I found this to be kind of a nice way to spread out my information and have it not look quite so desolate and empty, even though it's still pretty empty. Um, and I also got a little carried away with drawing triangles. You can see that there. <laughs> hey, Meredith, we do have a, yes. another question. Sure. Um, someone would like your take on, uh, they take a copious amount of notes for their work and mm -hmm it ties back to events that they have in their schedule. Would you recommend keeping those notes and the events together in one location in their bullet journal, or should they still continue to maybe focus on having their schedule in one place and their notes in another, if they do it, their notes digitally? Um, they're just wanting your opinion on if, it, if there would be a potential advantage to having it in one location versus two. Um. So if I'm understanding, so you're taking notes on a, in a given day that tie to a specific event, uh, but not necessarily the same time that you write that event down. Uh, so like maybe you wrote the event down a couple of weeks ago and then you have some notes that relate to that. So is that kind of the, it the idea behind like, it? It looks like it's tied specifically to their job. Um, mm and their, their notes are uh, several pages long. Um, um, but, they, well, I, their, but their notes have to be organized by article or project, um, mm -hmm. which they list in their, their bullet journal for organization purposes. Would you recommend keeping those then together or, or still separate? Hmm. Well, if they are several pages long, um, it, the, the downside to that is you'd have to walk around with a fairly thick uh, notebook to keep track of everything in conjunction with those notes. Um, now, an option for that is if you don't need to be carrying around a whole year's worth of information with you uh, at a time, you could always do a smaller chunks of uh, notes to like a three month bullet journal and that has all of your notes for you know the three months all together uh, wrapped up with the related events and information and then you can easily store that on a shelf and if you need to refer back to it you know pull it out and look at it um, but if it's a lot of notes then it might be easier to just have a uh, reference in the bullet journal of you know see notes in XYZ location um, because the the big struggle with if you do take a lot of notes is you'd have to figure out how to parcel out that uh, information throughout the year 
so that you're not walking around with a, uh, you know, Harry Potter last book sized notebook in your bag. <laughs> so that one is definitely a struggle. Um, and for me, I, I actually keep my personal journal and my work notes separate just because um, I like to have that divide in my life. But if you're wanting to keep everything in one place, you know, it, it may take a little bit of testing and balancing to figure it out. I think you helped her out. Thank you. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, that one's, a, that one's a tough one for sure. Um, so let's see, we had just got done looking at a monthly. So let me share a few fun ideas for some dailies. Um, so this one is kind of neat because they've incorporated a hourly tracker for the day at the top um, and have color coded it. Uh, they might have a key somewhere. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it looks like, you know, the, the blue color is the sleeping time and then they have some activity that they do in the day. And so you can kind of use this to kind of keep track of what free time you have available. So that's a fun option there. Um, I do actually do the little uh, weather tracker on my dailies because I like to just, you know, help it helps me be aware of my surroundings and how the day is going you can keep track of whether or not it was rainy what the high and low temperatures are you know fun things like that that help you just you know be aware of your surroundings if you want to but if you find that that's absolutely not useful for you you don't need to include that it's very much like i said what works for you um, this person here has used a whole page for their day um, but that's because they keep a schedule at the bottom here of what they're doing throughout the day, their tasks, and then they've got a little important list. And this one is actually done on a sticky note. So um, the nice thing about sticky notes is you can use them within your journals um, for tasks that maybe you know you're going to either need to repeat or you want to carry forward easily without having to rewrite it. You can put them on a sticky note and move them as you go. I've also seen this done with uh, meal planning. So if you have a standard meal that you typically are going to have with like a certain main dish, side dish, and it's all going to be the same no matter what, you can use sticky notes and just move those throughout your meal plan and switch them out for each week. And that's a fun way to conserve uh, paper. You could have just a simple meal plan spread that you use for every meal plan and you just switch out the sticky notes from week to week. Um, this is a interesting way to do the habit tracker where you actually track each individual habit separately. So this is a good way to really draw attention to where you're, you're succeeding in meeting your habit goals and where you might be not so much. <laughs> um, so like, for example, the nail care, this person, you know, clearly has not been doing it as much, but they've been doing a bang up job of writing in their journal. Um, and by spreading them out like this, you can kind of get a better view of that. Um, the downside is, of course, it does take up significantly more space than if you were doing the habit tracker where you use the same numbers for every habit. Uh, yeah, here's a fun idea for a mood tracker that's uh, picture themed. And that one's a fun little one. Um, this is a, a great way to do the build tracker. And this is actually very similar to how, how I have mine done. You have each bill separated out. And the nice thing about this is if you have bills that vary in amount, um, that they're not consistent from month to month, this is a good way to make note of how much each bill has been. So you can look at the year and go, oh, I've seen a huge uptick at this point of the year, what was going on, you know, and you can kind of keep track of your expenses. And we're near the end of our time. So if anybody's got any last minute questions, feel free to ask. I'm gonna kind of just keep surfing through these pictures um, and hopefully sharing some ideas that might cause inspiration. But if you have any questions before we're done, please do ask. Or you can always feel free to um, ask other questions later. We have, um, we are hoping to have a follow-up class with a bullet journaling 
tips and tricks. So hopefully, if you're interested in that, please do fill out a survey here and let us know what kind of things you're, you'd be interested in seeing in that class. We'd love to have a second go at that. Meredith, and if you want to minimize the, the poll on your screen, yes. it just, just show up as a gray block. Thank you. That's something I did not know. We learned something new today. Yay, technology. <laughs> so as y'all are responding to that, I will just kind of keep talking my way through this. Um, so here's another example of just a basic spending tracker and a savings tracker combined. And then I'm going to skip ahead to some examples that I really like. Um, for those who are trying to get up to habit on your chores, like some things are you know, slipping through the cracks, a chore list is a great way to keep track of that. You can write down the daily chores that you need to do, weekly ones and what days you plan to do it on, monthly and keep track of when it's been accomplished, um, your seasonal stuff. So you, say you want to, you know, clean out your dustbins four times a year and you make sure you've done that. Um, so this is a good way to break down all of the stuff that needs to get done and make sure that nothing gets skipped. Like, oh, I forgot to flush my water heater. Oh, that's awful. Um, and then a slightly more creative version of the book tracker. Let's see if I can make it bigger. Will it zoom in? So tiny. No, it doesn't want me to zoom in. So you can keep track of your to read list. If you want to get a little more artistic, you can draw up a bookshelf and write your titles as you read them on the books. So it makes a lovely, cute uh, reading list. Uh, so that's always a fun option. And we've hit two o'clock, so it is time to wrap up. Thank you all for attending. We really appreciate it. Um, let me switch back to our PowerPoint here. All right, uh, we do also have some websites if you're interested. I'll leave this up for a couple of minutes so that if you want to write them down, you can. Uh, the bulletjournal.com website is uh, Ryder Carroll's website. Pinterest is a great source for looking up inspiration. A lot of the images that I shared with you today were straight off of Pinterest. Uh, they've got a lot of great examples of the artistic style of doing things. If you're looking for some really like basic bullet journaling, you don't want to get into the artsy stuff, you want to keep it very functional, I highly recommend uh, reddit.com has a subreddit called basic bullet journals and people share the basic ways that they use their spreads and it's very much simple lines, simple text. Um, so it has a lot of ideas of how to keep it simple. And thank you all for coming out.